So uh, a, f a few notes uh, on these equations before we are going to analyze them uh, more in details. First, let's going to expand this uh, derivative. This is equal to zero because the Hamiltonian doesn't contain the stock of natural resources. And when we develop this, uh, um, this derivative, we obtain this term here. Q uh, little k uh, omega. What is Q little k and Q little r? These are the first derivative of the production with respect to the two inputs, to the two, uh, two, fac two factor, production factor. So what uh, we call in economics, these are the marginal products of uh, uh, capital K and the natural resources, how much on the margins the production will increase. What is U little c? U little c is the marginal utility of consumption, how much the utility increase with a, uh, with a marginal increase in our consumption. And uh, what is interesting is that what we want to obtain here is we want to obtain the, the, the numerical, the, the time path of price uh, of natural resources and capital from now to the infinite and this optimal time path represent the solutions of uh, our problem together with the optimal path of the control uh, uh, variables. So let's first to analyze the first two uh, equations. These are called the static uh, uh, efficiency conditions because uh, they do not involve any intertemporal uh, trade-off. Uh, that is how to say the trade-off that uh, uh, exists is uh, uh, within the same moment of, of times. And uh, the first equation arises from uh, the trade-off between uh, when you produce something to consume or to increase the stock of capital. The second trade-off here is uh, uh, given by uh, the choice if uh, uh, extract the uh, natural resources and in this case uh, we, we obtain as benefit uh, these times that we are going to say in a moment what it is or we decide to stop and to no longer uh, no longer uh, um, extract the resources and here we have the benefits uh, of uh, that is the marginal value of the resource uh, on, on stock so in each moment of time this trade-off must be uh, satisfied so we have in each moment of time we have this trade-off and the trade-off is maximized when the benefits of the two uh, uh, choice of the choices of cho how to allocate uh, the, the production or how to allocate the natural resource between keep it in the stock and uh, and uh, use and extract is uh, satisfied is the same uh, so in uh, more details that the, the so the, the first one is ag again how do I allocate my productions if I decide to consume, this will increase my utility. If I decide to allocate to the stock of capital, this will increase my uh, stock. So for, for this choice, my stock is evaluated at the margins by its price uh, in this given by omega. And uh, here, we, if I choose instead of to consume, my utility will uh, increase by the marginal utility of consumption. So these are the optimal, and each moment of time at the optimal, these uh, equations must be, the two benefits must be, must be equal. In terms of uh, extraction of natural resources, we have the same uh, uh, set up, we have the stock of natural resources and we can decide if extract and uh, what happens if we extract. If we extract, 
we are going to produce something and uh, this uh, amount that we produce again we can be either consumed or increase the stock of capital so which is the benefits if we decide to stop and and no longer extract we are uh, in this case we are saving uh, the uh, stock of natural resources and the value of uh, this at the margin is its price P. If instead we extract the, the value in terms of utility of uh, this, uh, uh, this choice of this marginal uh, amount of natural resource that we extract is given by QR by what? Well, it's the same, we just saw it here whatever at the margin at the optimal solutions must be the same so we can either call it uh, uh, like uh, we did here uh, omega or we can call it uh, uh, uc the two are uh, we saw that are the same so the, the idea is uh, that uh, among the optimal path in each moment of times this two trade-off must be um, must be solved uh, setting the benefits of the two choices to be the same. The other two equations are against efficiency conditions, but this time of a dynamic nature, that is the trade-off, it is uh, intertemporal. And uh, the efficiency, we can state the efficiency conditions uh, considering that each uh, kind of asset of resources in this very simple model just capital and natural and stock of natural resources must be earned the same rate of, uh, of uh, returns and this rate of returns that the resource uh, earns must be equal to what? to the social rate of discount to be efficient why is that? because if this would not be true if one resource would earn a higher rate of returns, well, all investors will jump to it till its price would increase and uh, the rate of return would lower down back to the social rate of discount. Or if we are in a market economy, uh, in to the uh, market uh, interest rate. So the first one in particular, when we rewrite this one in these forms, again, we, we, s we see that the equations say what we just said, that uh, the grow rate of the price of the natural resource must be equal to the social rate of uh, discount. This is called the Otelling rules, is a very uh, important uh, result in natural uh, resource economics for uh, the extraction of non-renewable resources. And uh, uh, yes, I think I already said that most of these in these slides. Uh, I skip the, you can skip the uh, mathematical uh, considerations here, but what you notice here that is that if the grow rate is exactly what we use to discount, the social rate of discount, it is clear that the price value in, uh, in uh, constant times will be, co will the price in constant times will be also constant. So the present value of, of the price of the natural resources will, will, be, will be constant uh, uh, along an efficient resource extraction path. And uh, what happens if we increase the uh, social rate of discount? Well, if we increase this one, it means that the price of the natural resource will also incre increase in a faster way. Concerning the second equations, when we rearrange the equations in this way, we notice that we have uh, the same uh, structure, so that the return of, uh, um, of uh, capital, uh, as intended as asset, must be equal to uh, the social uh, rate of discount. Why here we have two terms? Because for capital, in our model, we have two ways that uh, um, 
capital can uh, inc can returns uh, as uh, something in the first one is the increase the go rate of its price so the increase of price but capital also hello to produce something but qk well we don't have here that times because it's not the stock of natural resources that hello to produce q but is its ex extractions that increase q not its stock while here it is this the q depend from the stock of capital this is why we have also these terms here and you can think about uh, uh, a stock in the stock market so you go to Borsorama and you buy a stock of uh, uh, the Renault car maker how this will uh, which is the the return you get from 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 it you get a return if uh, its price increase and uh, that would be the stamps but you also have a dividend from owning that stock so every year you get some some money another return so you have these two components an increase of price plus some things that you get from the fact of having that amount of uh, of, of of stock and uh, this is exactly the same here